Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is a modern playbook roundtable. So let's go around and introduce everyone. Uh, sitting right next to me is the CEO. I'm here. What's up, boys? Oh, hi. It's all about the lawyer. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm also here. Um, and for the record, we won the comic book YouTube wars. Oh, boy. Details to follow. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Rob Reporter, Ultra Maximus here. Uh, be sure to check me out uh, Wednesday night on the uh, flip side for the Wednesday night comic book presser. Hey, Mr. Long Short here. Um, I'm the villain in the room, but happy to play the role. That's <laughs> true. I'm Steve in all capital letters tonight, and I'm ready to play. No whammies, no whammies. Come on, let's play. <laughs> And then I'm Aaron. Uh, you can also catch me on Comic Book Food Chain. So let's get a game started. Deal or flip side? Yeah. Oh, I like games. All right. So we have two indie books for us today. Our first is Canto Number One, the convention exclusive. And then we have Raphael Number One. Before we start picking books, let me give you some numbers. So for the convention exclusive, there's a total of 75 graded at a 9.8. For Raphael number one, there's 752 graded and only 93 at a 9.0. So let's start with Steve and see what he picks. No, this this is easy for me because you know I've read Canto and I'm honestly I'm 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 just not a TMNT fan. I don't feel one way or the other about them. But I mean I know enough. You know, I, I know the turtles' names, but uh, and I, I know who Casey Jones is, but Casey Jones isn't one of the turtles. So, and it's a nine zero, and and I have read Canto, and I th I think highly of it. Um, you know, I I think it has the potential to be this generation's bone, if I may make the comparison. Uh, this is easy, Cano, the convention edition. I don't have anything more to say. If the, I, this is this has been one of the easiest ones that I, I've I've had to make the decision on. So I'm interested to hear everyone else's thoughts. So I'll pass the baton. All right. So listen, there are a few people's opinions I respect more than Steve's, but I got to take the opposite side of this one. I think you know, in 1985, particularly these Turtles book were tough to get in high grade. It's unclear to me how big Canto gets, but Turtles are certainly established as a um, modern phenomenon. So for me, I would go with the Raphael one. The Eastman and Liard, you know, those early books, I read them in graphic novel. I never got them, those big graphic novels, if anybody ever saw them, but I read them there and uh, held the place near and dear to my heart. I was never actually super into them, but my younger brother was. And, um, you know, these books connected me with him in that regard. And uh, so so for me, I'm going with the Raphael 1 9.0. Oh, boy. And uh, the guy who went two spots before me said, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here here's the breakdown on what I know. Uh, so the convention exclusive for Canto number one obviously doesn't have the printer defects that the A covers sold uh, through the United States obviously did, but it's still convention exclusive. Uh, what's the print uh, or sales total or, or distribution figure on that exclusive? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, okay. I just know that there were 75 total graded. and 75. 44 at, Yeah, so there's 75 total graded and then 44 at a 9.8. Okay, so and that was probably a convention that had CGC on site. So it's uh, all right. So hear me out because the Raphael, if it wasn't a higher grade, if it wasn't a nine point eight, would be a monster and it would totally eclipse this book right now, and it wouldn't wouldn't be a fair fight. Uh, but it's a nine point zero. I don't know if there's very much room for that nine point zero to grow uh, as far as Casey Jones characters chasing it. But I do know the ceiling on Canto is not there at 850 and a 9.8 for the first appearance, uh, albeit in, even now in a, a convention exclusive. If it's the rarest version of the number one made, then you have the rarest version of the first appearance. And that would be where I am going to hedge my bets on if it was uh, this scenario. It's going to be the Canto. 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you know what I mean, I here's the problem. I, the hardest part about this game for me is that I would never spend the amount of money on uh, like a lot of these books that they clearly command, right? Right. Like, there's no way in the world. Like to me, um, if I saw like a raw nine eight Canada that Cano won, it better be like two hundred dollars or less. And and when I see it at two hundred, I'm gonna be like, eh, and it's gonna depend on my mood. And uh, the same with that Raphael, right? Like, I'm going to look at it and be like, uh, you want $200? I don't think it's a 9-2. Meh. Regardless of what GPA says, I, I just suffer from a level of cheapness that um, I think Scrooge McDuck uh, is about the only guy that's got me beat. But, um, you know, if it's like a book that I'm buying to keep for me, which is the only way that I would ever spend $850 on anything, sure as hell ain't going to be on Canto one, whether it's the convention variant, the A cover or whatever. Now the irony is I, it's hard to argue that, uh, in today's market, the Canto one convention variant, I think is the one that's got, um, the higher potential for explosive growth. It depends on a lot of things, right? Depends on if this movie actually happens. Depends on if this guy keeps writing it. Gal keeps writing it. I don't even know who writes it. Guy. Draw, draws it. Yeah. But if that stuff happens, Katie bar the door. Um, but if I'm going to end up spending, you know, 100 and, or I'm sorry, 800, see, I'm, 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 I'm uh, Freudian slip. El Cheapo strikes again. But if I'm going to actually spend 850 bucks, it's going to be for Casey Jones. It's not going to be for Canto. But in a so, 9.0, you're in for 850 on a, on a 90? Before I'd be in for 850 on a fucking Canto. I just can't wow. imagine a world where I, I would do that. I used to have the GPA record for Canto 1 and before the news. And uh, it's one of the few books where I like pissed around and sold early that I'm not like, Wow, I regret selling that. I was just, I mean, elated that I was able to get that kind of cash for it, and uh, yeah. So, what I'll I, say I, about I hope I hope I didn't uh, I hope I didn't dodge the question there. I apologize. No. I, was, I was like full honesty for me. I, I don't think you did. Um, just I think you know, Canto even before the announcement. I mean, it was really content driven and scarcity uh, driven. Uh, you know, people recognize the quality of the content. That's why I say it could be this generation's bone because nothing, you know, no, nothing has ever happened with bone as far as I know outside of the comics. Well, but the Netflix still, show is allegedly being made. Right. But I mean, yeah, I mean, 25 years later, right? <laughs> I hope it happens. I, you know, right. I used to joke. I, I remember giving away, uh, you'll appreciate this, Steve because Jeff Smith signed everything. Right. And when I was a kid, I, I couldn't get, you know, those first prints because they were super expensive quick, even though he was from around my area. I mean, he's a Columbus guy. That's about two hours from where I live. So I had um, a sketch and uh, signed graphic novel of bone that I loved. And I, I gave it to uh, like some lady at a small show who was like a grandmother. And I was like, keep this for your kid. If this thing ever gets made, it'll be the most popular cartoon ever. And this will actually be worth a ton of money. Uh, don't throw it away, please. <laughs> and I hope she didn't, but, you know. It just captured us when we were kids, man. It was wholesome, and it was cool. And I think Canto's got that same magic. Yeah. See, I'm a, I'm, I'm on the Raphael boat, too. Now, numbers-wise, can you believe there's a mini 9 of these is, there's a, is a Raphael number one? It's interesting. It's an interesting play. Like you said, Canto, I mean, if, if it ever happens, I mean, same thing with like Monstrous, right? Monstrous is another one. God Country is another one. I mean, we can go down a list of things that have been optioned that never come to fruition and start as bangers. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, you know, not the greatest, you know, Saga one, we can go down that. I mean, we can go down the road of heaters that never became anything. I'm, I'm, I'm all in on Raphael one, even, even though it's a nine Oh, I mean, Hell, I saw a seven and a half laying around that was signed by Eastman. That somebody wants eight fifty four. So, I haven't really read Canto, so I'm not too familiar with the story. I, I mean, I know obviously that got optioned and everything for that fan base. It's really exciting for them. Yeah, so I would have to pick the Raphael number one because it's something I grew up on, and 
you know, whatever they're doing, it, whether it be another movie or if they're doing a TV show, I definitely could see prices going up even, even more than they've already been going. And we have Star Wars number five, the first Asajj Ventress, and America number one, the hip-hop variant, second print. So I'm going to give you some numbers real quick. So for the Star Wars Mace Windu, there's 58 graded, 48 at a 9.8. For the hip-hop variant, there are 17 at a 9.8 and a total of 21 graded. You start up top and come down. Switch. switch. Yeah, yeah. I go. Yeah. I go first. I go first. Oh boy. Um, I I guess for now, I guess I would say I, I scream for America One, but it's gonna it's gotta be Star Wars Mace Windu because at least you know I could flip it later. You know, if I needed to, I, I bet you I'd go with Star Wars Mace Windu Five. It's like there's more Star Wars fan, there's wider appeal. America, you know, it it's it's almost like our reverse with Canto, like. Not you know it's it's one of those up and coming heaters. I'm I'm going with Star Wars Mace Windu number five. What do they say? America, fuck yeah! Um, I think the <laughs> like this is the first appearance of so and so in a Marvel comic instead of a Dark Horse hot comic oh, is boy. what people who are bad at comics say. Thanks. I find this fucking Star Wars Mace Windu number five to be the like most ridiculous fucking nonsense ever. Um. It's not even the under-ordered action figure variant. It's not the first Ahsoka. I don't know why Asajj Ventress is in the title, but hey, it's certainly hey, not her first appearance 11, either. 11, 11 people think otherwise if that's a, yeah, out of 12 bids. so Yeah, well, I understand that people buy it, I and mean, people buy stuff all the time. I just couldn't in good conscience spend any more than a dollar on that book. Uh, I mean, I can't say that I'd leave it behind at cover price, but I certainly would not spend twenty dollars on it raw. Uh, yeah. Is that terrible? Uh, but that America, I'd pick up all day or day. Uh, she's pretty. Um, I don't even like the hip hop variants. Like everybody else loves them, and I'm like, eh. uh, but I'm a, I'm Team America over uh, Marvel's second in reintroduction of a Star Wars character all day every day. And on Sunday, dude. No one cared. About, nobody cared about the hip hop variants though back in the day. Like, I mean, dude, I knew people with long boxes of hip hop variants who just give them away. I mean, that's my. I hear that. It's just this is more like America over Marvel reintroduction of I, Star I Wars characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, very interesting for me because, as I stated to, to, to Nico just a second ago, Mace Windu Five has a Mace Windu action figure variant by John Tyler Christopher, extremely underordered during the tail end of basically all the fatigue. And you know, all like, like I've stated before, when some of these variants go on for five and a half years, stores are just like, okay, you know what? Uh, we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> I still got all the ones that I couldn't sell before. And not many people were going to go and pick them up. I do understand the reasons why Star Wars people are chasing this book, especially Marvel Star Wars fans. There's two first appearances for a lot of characters now. There's the Marvel first appearance and there's the Legacy first appearance. So people who are smart are going and getting both. However, I don't see that book outlasting the way I do see the hip-hop variants as in, in a long-term you know, for the potential growth of your collection value. All right. So the, the, the hip hop variant was a second print variant, which is one of the two second prints that came in that set. And they were open order. Like I thought like for the longest time, they were qualifiers just like the other ones, even though they were open order, they're still tough to find in, in high grade because of the black bars. The color rub was very, very, very bad on a lot of these books. And as somebody who put together a set, I had to buy multiple copies of each book in order to try to get me that high grade candidate in order to, to have it make it into my collection and then get rid of everything else. So I'm with the America hip hop variant for sure. Just on those reasons alone. Yeah, this is an absolute layup for me. Um, it's America. And um, to be clear, um, ultra, there's actually three second prints of this book there was this one 
cover A, and they did a sketch sketch variant of the one in twenty five. Yeah, I was just talking about the the hip hop variants themselves. There was only two different hip hop variants that actually got a hip hop second print. Yeah, so the the second prints in general, though, right? There were there, there were three of them. I mean, they weren't heavily ordered. The first print of America number one wasn't heavily ordered. It was a forty thousand print run book, right? Nobody gave a shit. So I love this book. Love, love, love this book. At two seventy nine nine eight, I wish I had seen this because I would have been a buyer at this price. In a second, um, you know, she is going to be in Doctor Strange. Uh, in the Multiverse of Madness, uh, the character has been cast. That is not conjecture at this point. We know that to be fact. Um, it's not even close for me. That said, to qualify all this, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy, so I'm a little bit biased. But for me, very clearly, uh, the America won hip-hop. Okay, so I think I'm going to go a little bit contrarian on, on this. Now, I would I would not buy either of these books at these prices and the america uh i i have to say to me has the better cover art because i believe that's a hamilton uh an homage to, to the hamilton uh soundtrack right yes absolutely yes, yeah yes. so um a big hamilton fan i appreciate that however the market doesn't isn't rational right and, and we've, we've we've seen that and Despite this being, you know, the 50th Ahsoka appearance and the 30th, you know, Asajj Ventress appearance, it, it is what, what, you know, people create their own reality. And, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and, and Star Wars is, you know, IP that is just uh, immense. So I, I'm going to believe in the irrationality of the market. That people are going to keep believing Mace Windu Five is 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 a major key. The I I have two issues um, with America. One, uh, I've discussed this in the in the um, in the back channel before the show started. Um, I am not a fan of the America series. I tried to read it twice, and I know that we're not always buying for content, but. It, it, it's it's just awful. It, it really is just awful. So that prevents me from investing in this book. The second reason is um, the culture wars that go on in this country. Um, and I know, you know, ev everyone's, you know, yay America right now. Um, but I believe uh, when she comes to the small screen or big screen. I forget which happens. For, I think it's big screen happens first. I think 50% of the country is not going to like what they see. I, I think that's sad, but I think that could affect the the popularity uh, of this of this book. So I'm going to be the contrarian and say I if I had if someone held a gun to my head, I'd, I'd do the Mace Windu 5. Alright, so I would pick the Mace Windu 5 also. Oh, wow. It's a tie, dude. I fucking love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I agree with what everyone's been saying, though. Um, I, I don't know how you say that it's a first appearance of Ahsoka in Marvel continuity when she's literally in, like, what, one panel? Like, that, that you know. Wasn't she in one panel in another book, too? Yes, I, yeah. I don't remember. Darth Vader the, ten, right? The Vader, uh, right? The one where he's coming out of the water. Oh, 14. Well, so or I something had, like that. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. I have that book also, but I haven't looked through it. And from someone else I was talking to, they've read through it, and they said they never saw Ahsoka in that book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I mean, I I don't know what justifies yeah. like someone saying like this is their first appearance, and then no one can find it. Or if it's like some like little, you know, character in the background where you barely see it, and people are just guessing or something. It's I don't an know. Invisible first appearance. Yeah. So, you know, be, you know, if someone tells you a tip, make sure you check the book yourself before investing a lot of money into it. Is Jesus. what my advice would be. But anyways, let's move on to our last set of books. Sound advice from the master, Aaron. E. 
So we have Detective Comics 880 oh, boy. at a 96, and we have Batman 423 at a 9.2. So <laughs> I couldn't find numbers for the Batman 423, but there for the Detective 880, there's 1,920 graded, there's 518 at a 9.6, and 475 at a 9.8. So I'm not sure what the numbers are for Batman 423. That CGC census search is kind of hard to find when you list out like 20,000 Batman titles. Yep. So let's start with Steve. I know you're a big uh, DC guy. So yeah, this now this this is tough. This is tough. Yeah. I, I saved Man, the best for last because I, I I have a nine six and I I think I have a 423 at CGC right now. That's that's definitely not a nine six. That's probably going to be like a nine two. Man, this is this is really tough. Um, I mean, both iconic covers. I I, I feel like eight eighty has been iconic. Not not since inception, but you know, a couple maybe a year or two afterwards. Whereas the four twenty three is just getting. I mean, even though we've all known that it's iconic it's just getting its due in terms of value now i'm i'm you know i'm gonna say the the 880 um because i i think this the uh design uh probably has a wider appeal the mcfarlane it's actually probably not my favorite mcfarlane uh cover you know, I mean, we've seen this uh, Detective 880 on graphic comic boxes. You know, we've seen it probably on posters. And, you know, they, they could make the argument the Joker is more popular than Batman. I don't know. Um, just throwing that out there. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go on personal taste and what I believe that maybe the masses personal taste is and say the 880. Final <laughs> answer. So this is tough. Um, I'm not a DC guy, as you know. Um, as you all do know, Steve is the national treasure. So I don't like picking against him. I don't like picking against him. But for me, this is... Uh, in the grade part of it makes it tricky, but the book itself, for me, it's Batman 423. This is the the McFarlane cover from DC, as far as I'm aware. Um, McFarlane, I think, is only going to get bigger and bigger. And I'm not going to spend much more time on this because I don't have a lot of value to add. But in my opinion, I would be going with the 423. Um, it seems like the, the the safer bet, as much as it pains me to pick against Steve. I think that's the third time, though, tonight. So it, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well this uh this is very easy for me because i gotta say honestly gangbusters 9.6 are better folks i'm looking to to really win big on this one because this was a 20 dollar at a con buy and the guy had a, a beat up newsstand and he's like yeah man i want i want like 75 for the newsstand but i only want 20 for the direct i was like let me get that direct. <laughs> so I think there's more to going with McFarlane's first work than is that's not Jock's first work, is it? He, no. he, he's got many works that, that debut that, right? That, pre, that predate that. Right. And it's not McFarlane's first either. But it's just McFarlane's first Batman. Right. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, the, it, you have an iconic cover versus an iconic cover, but there are generations <laughs> split between the two of them. That's that's the, what we have going on here. But, I, you know, just the growth potential in McFarland over Jock, I think is there. And I would take the 9-2 McFarland over the 9-6 Detective 880, even though I know there's there's less of that Detective 880. By a long shot. Tech 880, all the way. Um, here's why. Uh, a 9.8, 880 uh, at a grand is not abnormal. It used to be an $800 book. Uh, this could double in price to 500, 
tick up a little bit. Uh, it easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Batman 423, right at a 92 at 250 to double at 500 would make a 94, a grand, a 96, two, a 98, four G's ain't gonna fucking happen. Um, so, uh, <laughs> 880 all the way. I, I think, Steve, I think you're, you're uh, the one uh, thing I would disagree with you about, if my recollection is correct, I think it took a lot longer than a year for this, uh, for 880 to take off. Because remember, 871 um, was yeah. the big book, right? Yeah. The first Snyder. I also love the Black Mirror story. I'm kind of a homer for Snyder's uh, stuff. Had Professor Pig, who I always liked as a DC character. You know, uh, that's kind of my take on it. Plus, I, I just, I think sometimes um, collecting comics for too long harms me because I've seen so many of those 423s for so cheap for so long. I may be dead before I appreciate how expensive that book actually is right now. So uh, 880 uh, all day. No, Dina? Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a 880 guy. Um We'll, we'll go to our pickups later. I, I just made the old CGC unboxing. Um, before, I, so I got a nine six in this um, in the recent unboxing I just did. But if I didn't have one already, I would say a eighty. It's such a tough book, especially in nine eight, and they're hammering you all the time on on nine eight. So I mean, like I, I seen Batman four twenty three for cheap. I mean, I I would even still say you probably get it for cheap still. If you if you know you know at a con or somewhere, I don't think you're getting the eight eighty for cheap. You know, so I'm on a 80 train. Um, that's that's where I'm at. I mean, hell, I didn't even find one. I found one. Luckily, I bought a collection and one was in there. One, only one. He had multiples of other books, only one of that book. So, so speaking of cheap on finding 423s, I've actually found a, you know, mid grade to low grade uh, newsstand for six dollars for a 423. My man. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I've bought a higher grade one uh, for like twenty bucks, like either at a con or at a shop. I can't remember; it's been way too long. Uh, but like Dino said, if you find a Detective Eight Eighty at a con, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and at the time, I you know, I went ahead and bit the bullet. I think I paid like eighty bucks for it or something like that. Send it off for grading nine six. So yep. can't complain. Tough. They're tough on that book, man. It's it's yeah. They're it's not giving out. Yeah, they're I, not giving I out. subbed in nine eight and uh, will forever regret selling it. I, yeah, it's it, and, and I regret selling nothing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm just like eh, go on, you know. But um, and it then, hurt. And then Steve did make a very good point that you know Detective Eight Eighty. That's iconic. You see it everywhere. You see it on boxes. You see it on cell phone. You know, hard cases, wallets, whatever. The 423 is definitely getting a lot of attention, especially since uh, I, I collect a little bit of statues and everything. The 100 black and white statue that DC put out was McFarlane's 423. So, hmm. and it came out at a weird time too when it was being released. So I pre ordered with my shop. For that statue, I still have not gotten it, and the reason why is because they split between instead of being from Diamond, they went on to uh, like Lunar or UCS. Mm -hmm. So my order got lost somewhere in that, and I'll have to check with my shop to see uh, if I'm still getting that statue or not, or if I'm going to have to pay some ridiculous amount of money. Oh. Probably skip out on it. But anyways, yep. So, oh, I guess I need to pick a book. Uh, I would buy the Detective 880. Good choice. <laughs> All right. So with our eBay news, uh, Ultra brought up a very good point earlier in our uh, meeting that misspellings of certain titles on eBay postings. Uh, I happened to find this using a typo hound or something like that. And I just put in something like Captain America. And what they do is they take you to a link and it shows you all the misspellings of Captain America. And so what they're saying is that you can use this tool to find cheap postings 
of misspelled words on eBay. Can't help you out with the ones that are miscategorized, but those are fun too. Yeah, I mean, this is just a just a, another interesting tidbit. You know, you can go and search for things and uh, and intentionally misspell a letter here or there, or leave one off, or or some of those things. But the website that Aaron was talking about basically gives you a, f- a few ideas to run with, and then you can hit the search button, and you will probably find some things. Misspell variant. That one. That one's big time a lot. Uh, just you know, misspellings of of names in the in the title, and sometimes you might yield a result that won't pop up in normal search parameters when you're diving through the eBay listings. Yeah, if I really want a book, I will um, in my saved searches put it in a couple different ways because I know that you know some com- like comics just have um, like I shoot with a really broad. Uh, and then I try to get really specific. You just got to kind of be aggressive with that sort of stuff. In, in my experience, so you're you're absolutely correct there because you have, let's say you have a retail incentive cover, right? One guy's going to list it as a variant. Another guy's going to list it for the ratio with the semicolon, and the other guy is going to list it as a retail incentive. Like he's going to spell out the words <laughs> retail incentive. Well, uh, and some people won't realize it's a variant and all you get is the name of the title and the number. And yep. like, if you really freaking want it really bad, then you got to look through those every day too. Um, mm-hmm. But there's deals to be had on, on, uh, online Dino's deals online should be its own YouTube <laughs> show. Uh, <laughs> what this, what this guy's pulled together in the last, uh, what 90 days or so, uh, is legendary. Yeah. Uh. I just yeah, look at the PM dude, of stuff that he sent, and it's just like, yeah, that's cheap. Man, yeah. Jesus, where do you find this stuff? <laughs> yeah, how many Spider Man 12099 still autos have you found now at this you point? Know, f- uh, four or five. I, you know, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hell, I got, I got, I had what, three or four Star Wars, Air the Empire. I mean, you can just go down a list. Like the hottest books is like, you know, you just got to know where you're going to find stuff at, man. Well, that one GTC variant that has one. 98 on yeah, the census yeah, yeah. that I was so, looking for uh, that you then thereafter knocked out what? I don't know. I, I gave have. mine away okay, because yeah. I had one. And then I'm looking for a replacement copy. And since then, Dino's found, I think, a half a dozen. I'm like, this motherfucker. I should have had another one, but I missed it. I was cooking, <laughs> I was cooking dinner. So it kills me. Yeah. Uh, There's you and, and Chloe's comic swag. So yeah. uh, being aggressive online, you can find some really cool books. But um you know, I think uh, little tricks like um, using Lyrica Exchange, using, uh, you know, all these, all the different options to try to like dig in and, and watch auctions and uh, change how you spell things and search for things. They, they make the difference. You know, pick, click, yep. Im- image search, you name it. Yep. All right. Crafty. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and see if we can help you out by, you know, answering your questions on this panel. And, you know, we'll try to discuss it on next week's uh, roundtable. All right, Ben, you're up. You said you wanted to give a bit of news on purchasing 9.6s versus purchasing a 9.8. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in the modern market, it seems to me that there are fewer fat pitches right now than 9.6s of really rare books versus their 9.8s. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why this is the case. But uh, the, the first is, right, and I want to be very clear that this is for not for commons, right? These are for, for, for books that are likely sort of sub-1,000 print run type books. Um, 9.8s are going to get gobbled up right at really really high prices um they're going to be gone and the nine sixes strike me if you're looking purely in terms of roi uh, the best opportunity and if i'm thinking sort of just broadly generally and this is not universal by any means that nine sixes trade for half the price of 9.8s generally right um and and my expectation of what's going to happen here is, is that eventually um, that those nine sixes are going to start to close that gap to the nine eights. Nine eights aren't coming down. I'm not saying that you overpaid for your nine eights. So please don't come after me for that. I'm not saying that. 
What I'm saying is, is that once those nine eighths have been absorbed, the people are going to pay up for the nine sixes. And that gap's going to go from a 50% discount to maybe a 25% discount. Um, so there's a lot of money to be money to be made buying those 9.6s. And um, you know, I think we have a recent example here of uh, Vengeance Number One, the 1 in 15 variant. Um, and and there's not a lot of uh, recent sales, but what I think what we've seen is a 9.6 selling most recently for. Um, about 800 versus um, the 9.8 going for 2,500. Is that correct, Aaron? Is that the data that we have on that? 2,600, uh, something in that range? That sounds correct. Yeah, I'm seeing it right now, and it looks like the same seller sold a 9.8 uh, on February 27th, and it says 3,500 or best offer. Best offer was accepted. So I don't know what the actual sale price was, but then the same seller also had a 9.6 for 850 best buy it now. So it wasn't like he was trying to set such a disparagingly big gap between the two or was he? <laughs> Cause I can't really tell. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about the specific seller or any games, but I think this example is, is fairly common uh, for books um, this rare. So as context, uh, Vengeance number one um, was about 26,000 ordered by retailers. Um, so the one in 15 um, is a relatively um, small print run by comparison. This is America Ch America's first appearance for anybody who's wondering. My, my point is, is that I think that 9.6 has presented a huge opportunity. A lot of people, frankly hate 9.6s they're willing to sell them um very quickly to get them out of their collections so um i think the savvy play um is to start gobbling these books up for the super rare books whether it's the one in 25 ultimate followed four uh vengeance whether it's uh edge of spider verse uh number two the greg land any of these hyper rare 9.6s i think are likely to spike in prices. And anybody who knows anything about grading books, the difference between 9.6 and 9.8 is super, super, super fine. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, there, there, there are fewer sort of big opportunities in this market right now than, than, than grabbing these 9.6s. Um, happy to take pushback for anybody who thinks differently. Oh, um, I, I, when you say they'll be absorbed, are you saying that they'll be absorbed into personal collections and not up for sale again as far as the 9.8s go? Yeah, I, I think that they're going to basically be um, be absorbed by collectors, right? The collectors versus the speculators. The collectors effectively buy these books and sit on them, whereas the speculators are looking to move them. Um, but I, I'm, my thinking is, is that they're going to basically be absorbed into collections and, and sat on, not to see the light of day again. Um, in the immediate term, right? Because because I'm trying to roll it around in my head because you know one of the um, rumors that we hear about this market is that it's you know the uh, the in, the investment firms that are you know grabbing up the 9.8s to diversify their own or their clients' portfolios. So they're the ones that are snapping up these books for thousands or you know in the case of ultimate fallout for variant you know tens of thousands um of dollars so i'm i'm just wondering you know will will we see how, how many will we see disappear into personal collections versus how many will just be flipped <clears throat> yeah i mean that, that's hard to say i mean it, it is it listen, is hard. i'm in the investment business and this right. notion that investment firms are buying these books seems impossible to me because the amount of capital they have to put to work could never possibly put to work in comics it's just not possible right they couldn't even begin to put a fraction of their capital to work into comics it's not a rational way to reallocate capital we hear this I know a lot of people in this business. I've never heard or seen of anybody actually doing this. Um, Thank from, you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, it's not something I'm 
particularly a a, a a believer in either. So, Doctor Doom's castle's in my backyard. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what, what I will say is this, and I want just to sort of paint this picture about these books that are that are hyper rare, right? So these higher ratio variants. If we were to think about a book that had one copy, right? So a, a singular copy available, the condition wouldn't matter, right? Right, that book would be sought after in whatever condition it was, it would sell for a crazy price if there was demand for it. Um, so as I think about books that have low print runs, I think condition matters less and less. And I'm not saying books that are kicked to shit, but nine six versus nine eight for really rare books. I don't see the value disparity being disparity being that different for modern books. So I would really be gravitating towards these. If I'm looking to make return on my investment, I'd be happily buying two nine sixes for the copy of a nine eight, expecting that gap to close. Um, and I'm happy to get pushback on that, but I think that's a really smart play for people chasing these modern books. Um, and I would be all over it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't uh, pushback isn't necessarily the word I would use, but um, I think uh, I would like double down on what you're saying um, even more than merely rare uh, ratio variants or, um, you know, super rare books that uh, a lot of times the difference between a nine, eight and a nine, six, hell if I know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I mean, think there's the greater head the night before. I mean, I just, yeah, 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 I the mean, greater knows himself what the differences between the two half the time. Yeah. So I, you know, I have a bad habit when I get nine sixes back, they're just out the door. Right. And, uh, I give the advice that I need to hear, um, for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, I got a buddy who just got back a, a pretty significant CGC submission, um, uh, kind of disappointed with uh, some of his grades, got a, a lot of nine sixes on books that he thought were nine eights, um, or at least he thought he had a shot on. Um, and I don't, you know, uh, I, I don't ever want to dissuade anyone from uh, cracking and, and resubmitting books, uh, nor do I uh, ever uh, want to suggest that, um, you know, it's like a nine eight or, or dime mentality. Uh, so for me, particularly when it, uh, we've got like 4X, 5X kind of uh, uh, like anomaly prices, um, buying it at a 9.6 makes a lot of sense, uh, particularly, again, if um, these books are so coveted that uh, you can't even buy 9.8s anymore uh, for certain books, which I find to just be wild. Um, but you know, we all know what those books are, right? Like for example, uh, part one of uh, days of future past can't buy a nine, eight makes no sense. None. Absolutely no sense whatsoever. Not oh. a, an uncommon nine, eight, not an uncommon book. Uh, I mean, hell it already, it was already transformed into a, a movie, not real well, but it was the best part of that damn movie anyway. Um, and now the, the nine eights are just gone. Uh, so it, it's interesting. Um, clearly there's new money in the market. Um, I think a lot of times when people talk about like traditional investors, uh, as opposed to, uh, comic investors, I don't know that they're necessarily, uh, trying to suggest that a hedge fund is coming in and fucking buying comic books. <laughs> Um, but you know, like, uh, the suggestion I think it is more that, um, people are looking at comic books as a non-traditional investment and coming from, uh, the same kind of background that, um, you know, a lot of us have, which are their professionals. Uh, they may do a little investing in traditional markets and, and now want to diversify and get into whatever, move out of cards into comics, move out of coins into comics. Um, I don't know if anyone still collects stamps. But um, I, I think uh, those guys who were doing the, the crossover, right, are used to tenor bust um, on cards. And I don't know what the deal is with coins, but again, they're two sided objects. Right. And uh, comics are different. Like there's a lot of people in our community who've been here for a long time that don't even believe in encapsulating their books. 
and they grade them and they read them and they like the way they smell. The fact that the smell of comics is a thing that people talk about routinely means that they don't put them in fucking plastic. So, um, yeah, nine, six makes a lot of sense to me for a thousand different reasons. Uh, not the least of which are the ones that, uh, Ben just discussed. Yeah, man, there's a behavioral aspect to all of this, right? And, and behavioral um, tendencies drive markets, right? This this is a this is a fact, and people feel inadequate about their nine sixes, and so they're willing to dump them <laughs> for prices that are ridiculous. I'm not I'm not joking. I mean, you know, you know what? And this is a this is a man I love, but Mel even admits it. He's like, it's irrational, but I hate them, right? It's irrational, but I hate them. I want them out. Um, so you can buy these books for 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 uh, deep discounts, and I think they have big big upside, um, big big upside. So, um, anyways, j just my two cents. Fattest pitch in the market, in my opinion, are nine sixes on some of these books. Book, I would be grabbing them. Um, you you know, it really wants there's there's one way to change the the whole nine six is a bad thing stigma. One really really easy way to change. And that is look for look for the book, but look for the book that has that little guy at the bottom of it. Yeah, that, where it doesn't come normally. And accepting nine six newsstand has always been something I know a lot of people that are like, I'll take a nine six newsstand or a nine eight direct, and it's like, why is it always the direct market is assumed to be in better condition? And everybody's like, oh, well, the new stands I went to were, were manhandled. I'm like, my LCS had a spinner rack, too. And they had that that multiple multiple bin with metal, you know, like clamps around the outside, just like the spinner racks did do, back in the day. Do you guys still go to comic shops that have their new books displayed in a way that uh, you can be confident that they will be mangled? promptly yes. and effectively yeah. i do too it blows my mind like they'll put them on the metal bars at the bottom or uh you know they'll they'll just have them the swatched plastic, in there the plastic sh yeah like what, they go what? like the thing that goes up halfway just to, to get the freaking spine crease you know yeah. across i'm just why like what is why, happening why don't but why don't stores bag and board with a mylar every new book right like like think about that Everybody's all want to be environmentally conscious. And I had a discussion with the kid when I went and picked up a pack of Mylars today. I said, I don't want to add a bunch of additional polypropylene bags to the trash environment in five to seven years. I want to buy one Mylar bag and board the book once. And that's it. I don't need to ever replace it unless I get the book slabbed. Okay. And that's, that's the difference. So Mylars are better for the environment. So don't kid yourself there. But yeah, nine, six newsstand. You take that in a, 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 a Gen 13 newsstand number one, nine six, all, all day, all day, so, all day. Uh, and, yeah. and, and then the, all these X Men books and all these all these other books up until the very end of newsstands themselves. I would take a nine six in almost every single one of them, especially hey, as the first. Appearance. You know, I, uh, speaking of the scarcity and 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 newsstands and what what people pay for a condition. I mean, I sold a, a Captain America eleven. The Winter Soldier Origin, you guys saw, you know, a couple months ago, I, I came across a newsstand uh, dealer. So I have, I have, I think, like five copies of that. So a very fine, yeah, very fine near mint. Uh, I put it up today for, I think, $199 or best offer, got $185. I mean, Gone. so that'll, you know, that shows you as far as scarcity. Uh, that's a really great book, Steve, book. too. That, that, that's a book that's wildly underappreciated. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a very fine near mint. I grade, I, you know, I graded it at a 9.0. And and then, you know, one time, Ben, you said something about uh, the modern day newsstand. And that's also what I have right here. You know, this is one of the Walmart editions. It has its own barcode separate from all the rest of them. And even though the cover art is identical to the first print and all the other ones, the barcode is what makes it actually different. So that's this is the only way you can get a modern day newsstand since the halt of production on those newsstands. Uh, so that's you know e even changing it anymore. And and just imagine what's it going to be like for some of those books? Because there was that wave of 
Walmart variants where nobody gave a uh, nobody gave a shit. Like, let's just be honest. I remember one times the the, the, yeah, the before Walmart, they were changing the covers, right? In particular, well, right? They they did they did a wave of variants, and the first one that got me to buy was the Ron Lim All New Wolverine nineteen. Mm. Because Wolverine Night, all new Wolverine nineteen had a one in five hundred variant. Plint, you know, sales totals were bloated, and then here comes an all new cover art exclusively available through Walmart. I was like, whoa, 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 wait, what? So it's a little weird to see some of the recolorings and things like that. But when they have all new cover art, that's that's the newsstand of the it future. Hurts, right? It there. hurts to talk about it because I, I I think about every Rogue One Walmart pack I didn't uh, pick up. I don't think, about that think, about all, think about all the people who did not buy Spider-Man number one gold newsstand from Walmart way back in the day. Hundred percent. That would that people forget that, that book was a Walmart exclusive, right? <laughs> you know, and and again, you know, I had somebody talking about the book, and he showed a, a real nice copy, and one came in through the store when I was working there, and you know. You want to take everything home that that comes through the store, especially key books like that. You're like, oh, I want it. But, you know, there's got to be something for the customers to buy. Otherwise, you don't have a job. So I had to I had to let that one get rehomed by somebody else. And I've regretted it ever since because that's a monster of a newsstand book. And that's also another book I would take. I would take a nine six gold Spider-Man 1990 Walmart variant over a nine eight platinum. I mean, like nine four nine six, like this. We're, we're we're splitting hairs at the end of the day here for really, really special books. And this is the whole point of this: is that people are literally overlooking super important comics, right? And you can buy them at a fraction of the price. And in a couple of years, I think we'll look back and say, "What the fuck was I doing? Why wasn't I buying these books?" But then, also, as somebody who who does a little bit of pressing, I also know. The formula and and if if somebody's watching this and is curious no not every nine six is going to get pressed up there's there's going to be some that you will submit it forty thousand times and it will never ever ever get higher than that nine six but you're right there's still enough rarity in the book to warrant owning it all right uh so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic all right so as we know Free comic book day is coming up and it's going to be on august 14th 2021 i just kind of wanted to showcase a few books that i was kind of interested in and like just see, see what the panel thought of so there's going to be the boys hero gasm and enter the house of slaughter i, I like how they didn't choose the cover to hero gasm number one <laughs> yeah <laughs> i yeah, actually put one I pulled this exact book out of a bin for 50 cents recently. Nice. Does, is it kind of ironic to anyone that uh, free comic book day for kids has hero gasm number <laughs> one from the boys as like, Oh well, dude. I mean, I mean, you know, something has come with children is not that far off. I mean, from being a good point, little dead babies, little <laughs> children being ripped into and so forth. I digress you to remember the young terrorists free comic book day from many years ago that well, even local you. stores to me was were like yeah we didn't want to order any of that, <laughs> <We're gonna pass laughs> <on> that. <laughs> like so okay. let me ask you guys this uh <laughs> do you does anybody watch eta nick oh yeah, yeah. love him love him right so eta nick has forever been the uh the sky is falling. There will never be uh, comics in X number of years. My kids don't like it. I, I can't con them into buying books. And here in the last two weeks, I was listening to him. I, I just love the dude. Uh, He's gone all in, right? I mean, he goes, uh, he, he, he figured it out, right? It dawned on him that uh, new collectors, they're not seven. They're in their 20s and that the focus on the return on investment, you know, the cash value of comics, the investment, uh, you know, potential for these books is intuitive for someone in their 20s. Right. So, I mean, it's just part of it. 
and uh, you know it clicked for him here recently. And uh, you know I think this is sort of uh, a prime example of that, right? Uh, free Comic Book Day is not just for kids anymore. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> You know what? Free Comic Book Day just makes you speculate on what's going to happen in the releases that follow it. And it may actually get you to go back into the back issue bins and go a little back issue diving. And that's oh, I actually think, what. I think this is going to be good for both titles, don't you guys? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Although, I don't know how much better it can get for something that's killing the children. I mean, my Amen. God. I, I mean, it seems like they just keep on expanding on the universe building of what they initially set out to do to me. All Ooh. right. So we have Star Wars High Republic Adventures, and we also have uh, the Marvel Star Wars High Republic. So both are going to get a free comic book day issue. And this is how you create lines out the door. Oh, having both, yep. <laughs> yeah, so any anybody else really into these Star Wars stories at this point? I've been enjoying the Adventures storyline. Yeah, the Adventures is definitely better so far. It's funny you should say that. Yeah. I, I, I see why. And it, it's the IDW books are always going to be the lesser looked upon. <laughs> probably the lesser ordered but in the grand scope of things are probably going to put out the better content which is amazing when you think about it because marvel's flagship title you'd figure star wars is so big we should take care of our baby we should have the best writers the best artists and multiple books a month like x-men used to do back in the 1990s right but it almost seems like what marvel is just like saying oh it's star wars people will buy it no matter what Oh, you mean like how they put Wolverine in everything back in the 1990s and people bought it? <laughs> Same thing, man. The not final art part, that's always something I watch out for. Because whenever they do this not final art, usually means something's probably going to happen in the book. So being a free comic book day, of course, they are usually setting up stories. But pay attention to the books that are happening up to the release of free comic book day. Yeah, it is amazing. I, um, I, I actually forgot that I, if you go to mybargaincomics.com, I did a whole, there's no other site that I know of that has a comprehensive list of every single comic that's been released for every single free comic book day uh, with pictures. But you know, when I think about that, you know, it's amazing what books have come out of free comic book day that have seen uh, huge gains and you know uh, and it's hard to I mean I'm sure it's hard to see it at the time and you know I'm curious what else they're offering Aaron but um, you know when you think about Umbrella Academy when you think about um, Star Wars the Clone Wars from 2011 the first Savage Opress uh, there's the, the last airbender uh, first uh, it's just, it, first Nadia yeah. Pym yeah, you know, it's I mean, there, there, there's there's they're always dropping Easter eggs for us in these free books. Right. At least, yeah. at least there's something for, for the free people. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. yes, it does dilute the first appearance a ton when it's in a free book like this. But still, they're, they're Star Wars, I think, is one of those things that adds more readers than they print books on a monthly basis. And and one one topic about the, or one point I wanted to bring up about this this topic is you know I, I know not everyone believes this um, but the free comic book day comics are not free they're not no, they're not free to the retailers they actually do get charged they can be as little as eight cents per comic up to 40 cents plus the retailers have to pay for freight and they don't always have control over the multiples of what they order. For example, if you want to be an official free comic book day participant store, um, you know, this year you have to order 
all 12 of the gold level titles so that's probably the marvel book um there's there's like three or four tiers there's gold uh books there's silver there's bronze i think there's even another tier so you have to order at least 20 of all 12 of the gold titles to be an official store that way you get on the free comic book day site you get listed um and then with a lot of the titles you have to order in quantity in multiples of 10 so if you want to get 11 copies you're out of luck that'll be rounded up by by diamond to to 20. um oh, wow so that is why when you go to stores some of them will have you know pick one or pick two because it is actually um it is actually costing them money and it all adds up especially you know when free comic book day started the first free comic book day there were three titles um this year there's 50 uh yeah. comics being offered um so you know 50 um it just it adds up so I, i'd say be kind to your retailer you know if you're if you're not really um interested in something don't get it uh you know just to have it um if you are going to speculate um you know one one trend that i've seen is you know i i look at the independents uh because the, you know they don't have to be ordered in order a lot of them don't have to be ordered and either uh, in order to qualify as a gold uh, level uh, participant. Um, and those tend to get ordered in lower quantities. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you want walk, to walk that fine line with, with treating your retailer right. Um, and, and, and then, you know, and some, some of them do um, ask for, you know, donation, usually to a charity. So, you know, just kind of do the right thing, you know. All right, and let's go over all 50 Good covers. Stuff. So, no, I'm just joking. This is like, <laughs> this is my la the last two sets of books I have uh, pictured. I just kind of like went through the website and kind of picked out covers. That I was like, oh, that looks interesting. Uh, so we, here we have uh, Stray Dogs. And then I thought this was kind of interesting, a uh, Valiant Uprising, and where it features different, different titles and stuff like that, so. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. no, but, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to like show off some books and like, you know, what everyone kind of was good, you know, if they were going to pick up my free comic book day books and, uh, did anyone else find it weird? That's not happening in May. No, yeah, definitely. I'm rarely speechless. Comics often leave me speechless this, these days. I, I got nothing. One, one, one brief controversy that I've, I've read about is DC says they're going to um, participate in free comic book day. However, diamond owns the trademark and the logo and everything associated with free comic book day. Um, so it hasn't been That's revealed nice. yet as to <laughs> how exactly DC is going to participate. Whether they're, they're just going gonna, to, they're just going to drop in a free giveaway book, uh, something with a cover price that is F R E E. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And it's going to be Good the day on. before. It's going to be the day before Marvel comes well, out. Well, actually, it's going to be three days before starting <laughs> for stores that get their shipment before everybody else. Right. All right. And then Sweet on Jesus. that note, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for joining us. Uh, make sure to check out all our other content. If you leave comments below, we'll check them out and see if we can add that topic to our discussion on our roundtable. Easy. Yeah,